Hi, Chris Brown here from The Merry Gamers, and I am sitting at a very comfortable eight-hour chair along with the, uh, d the designer, owner, instigator of Geek... Ah. Geek Chic. That's all right. Geek Chic. Geek Chic, uh -huh. HQ.com. Uh, Robert, yes. uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for letting me sit at your table. Uh, it's quite now, cool. these are very special tables. If, if you've been to gaming conventions, comic conventions, uh, tabletop gaming conventions, uh, Gen Con, you name it, you have probably seen these fabulous tables around. And uh, let me let me ask you first off, mm -hmm. uh, how did you come up with the idea of, of providing tables for, for, for gamers and, and uh, whether they be tabletop or, or console gamers, PC gamers? Well, I think that you don't you don't actually come up with this idea unless you're a geek uh, yourself, actually. So, I mean, I, I joke all the time that my business model is I, I create solutions for my own problems and then offer those solutions for sale. So, uh, I think that, you know, everyone has had ideas for how our hobbies could be better. And uh, I was... When I had my ideas about how our hobbies could be better, I realized that I could actually do them and turn them into a business, and then I realized, oh, oh, if I don't do it, maybe no one will. So I felt kind of a burden and responsibility. I mean, 40 years of uh, role-playing gaming, and there, there hadn't been a table yet to help us, and I felt like, well, make, let me give it a shot. I think there's people out there that want to, you know, we didn't grow out of it. We did not grow out of it, so, you know, yeah. maybe we should be given the opportunity to grow into it, you know? So uh, <laughs> that's kind of the way it goes. That's a good, that's a good way of thinking. Um, one thing I, on first notice of these tables, you, you immediately, immediately notice that they're well crafted. I mean, there's, it feels, it feels wonderful to sit at. It's beautiful walnut uh, uh, finish on, on these ones, and I've seen oak finishes and uh, you know, what natural. And yeah, we, we oak would be a special order item. A lot of people talk about finishes, like walnut finish. Um, kind of the difference between that is the terminology that exists out there today, and what is actually what we do is that it's not a walnut finish. It's just oh. actually walnut. It's, uh, we use black walnut, we oh, wow. use cherry, uh, we use uh, all hardwoods so that you, that you're talking about the quality of construction, we talk, we, uh, we, we basically manufacture heirloom quality, which is to say antiques, you know, modern antiques. Uh, antiques are antiques the moment that they're made. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Not, you know, sometimes I have friends who will come to me and say, look at my antique, and I'm like, it's a plastic cha chair from 1968. <laughs> Just because it's old and it didn't break doesn't make it, made it a, mean it's an antique. It's uh, it got lucky, but but uh, antiques are made so that they will be generational items, and that's what our furniture is. So we want uh, your your grandchildren to fight over. Them. You know, that's that's the way we feel. About it. Well, you know, of course, the, the the key feature of any of these tables is you you can't just you know if you have a coffee table, put kick your feet up it, you know, or lay down some magazines. Or if it's, a, if it's a dining room table, you just you, don't, you just can't just use it for for eating at. These things open up, mm -hmm. and they are designed with with gamers and and, and around what what each individual household wants. Can you talk about what what's in it for gamers? What can they find in, in a geek cheek uh, table? Well, or, we or we try table? and cram as much. We know that footprint space inside of the home is really kind of precious and uh, we try and cram as much as we can into whatever item it happens to be. I was sitting at my coffee table uh, and I was I was searching through baskets that were ostensibly to put the controllers in uh, and uh, there were no controllers in those baskets. There was a, a lot of My Little Ponies but uh, <laughs> no no controllers and I was just, it struck me, I all of a sudden was struck by the coffee table. Like We call it a coffee table. You mean a place that you retire to <laughs> after having dinner and have coffee? And that's just not the usage scenario that really exists. I mean our, our coffee tables are now these command centers for our living room. Mm -hmm. And I said, all right, so this is a dysfunctional piece of furniture. How would I be able to strip this down and build it back up? So I said, I play games at my coffee table. So I want to be able to leave games in progress or set them up and then cover them up so that I can play them later in the week with my, with my children or with my friends. Uh, I want to have a big drawer that has that is special places for all of my controllers and remotes and everything like that so that I know that they're supposed to go at a particular place. I want to have the ability to add other things to make that desk to add desks or add extra cup holders or a counter holders and bits and places to add more of that to the perif periphery of the coffee table, but not for it to be permanent because you don't want a huge coffee table all of the time. You want, but occasionally your coffee table needs to become bigger to help it. 
And the same way for our dining tables. Our dining tables become gaming tables because you can cover up a game that is in progress. If you have a weekly D&D game, you can leave your figures up, you can leave the dry erase uh, stuff out, out all marked up. You can say it's this person's turn, write it right on the table and cover it up with the leaves and then go back to eating dinner and playing other games on top of that game to get back to it on that weekly basis. Um, and there's other things too. I mean, like uh, the Alexandria Codex, which is behind us, that, that was my, I realized I had these collections of things that, that were important to me that had no better solution for storage than a white cardboard box. And I, you know, that just guarantees that they can only go into containment rooms and attics and basements, you know, the places that we're allowed to have our action figures, you know. And uh, I said, you know, this is not, I didn't stop collecting comic books. I think it's, I think they're, they're beautiful pop art. Everyone knows that they're the, the greatest pop art of generations. And why are we relegated to putting them out of the out of sight and out of mind when we really should be putting them in the places that we live? And so, just providing those kinds of options all the way around, all the way around. Now, earlier you you said something about uh, making instant antiques, mm -hmm. and I was thinking about this. You know, a lot of people they, they they go to you know they show up at PAX Prime or or any of these conventions you guys are showing at. And I, I know myself, you know, when I look at the price, I, you know, there's that instant twinge of sticker shock. It is, you know? of course. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, and you start adding up. But I was thinking about this the other day. So I go home and I look at my table that I can only use to eat mm -hmm. on or put stuff on. Yes. And, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, want to re I want to replace, you know, there comes a day where I have to replace the table and I go to my local, you know, furniture store. I'm paying virtually the same price yeah. as one of these tables, but, but in these tables, I'm getting a functionality that I could never get in anything else and a craftsmanship that is like catered to me or my household directly. Yeah, it's, it's actually, you know, in some cases we're making, depending on where you are going to get your dining room table, we're making a better quality dining room table with the addition of all of the extra bits and pieces, the drawers that slide out or all of this kind of thing. So um, people that, that are very familiar with furniture, which is actually a smaller percentage of geeks because we've been given plastic items to buy over the years, and there's, but a small percentage of geeks goes, I, I, oh, I know wooden furniture. They look at it and they go, this is really, really inexpensive. <laughs> That's not the normal reaction that people have, but it's but part of it is, is that part of this is I want to give uh, our community, our geeks, the ability to have some nice things and be able to access that kind of world, that heirloom quality world, where you know we didn't, we're not going to stop playing games, and so it makes uh, it, it's an appropriate item to buy that will last for your lifetime. And when you look at it in terms of, I know, I know, like for example, these tables run around three thousand dollars. Now I know that I have in my life spent three thousand dollars on a computer that yeah. was obsolete inside of five years. Yeah. And you know, and you and you look at this and you go, price, if, if you want to look at it and go price per year, you know, this is an extraordinary value. Yeah. But at the same time, we all know it's still it still is an impact. But it, it really is just about if it's important to you, go ahead and make it important. Oh, Spend no, the money no. and make it important. And and the thing that people are realizing, our customer base is realizing, is that when you do something like this and you do it for yourself, it actually is kind of an interesting marketing step for your for others right. because they come in and they say, wow, this table is really wonderful. I, what, I can see that it's unique. What does it do? And you say, well, it's for playing games. Right. You don't have to have that awkward conversation where you're like, where with the, with the friends that you're trying to test out and mm, I don't know. They say, well, what is for games? And they say, well, what kind of games you play? I can show you. And you're already <laughs> past all that nonsense and you can yeah. be right into that. And it becomes a, a signature piece of whatever room it's put in as well. Well, I mean, ideally. <laughs> ideally, yeah. yeah. Now, Obviously, um, I, personally, I'm not a tabletop gamer per se. Um, I'm, I love console games. Uh, we we actually use our, our our kitchen table as our podcast area. Precisely. Um, how much customization can can uh, a, a, a customer do with with your with your tables and, and or uh, wood products? Um, when we're asked questions like, "Can you do X?" I mean, anything's wild. This is like, you know, can I? Can I uh, make this table, uh, put it on, on uh, electric legs that'll walk it to another room? <laughs> you know, which is ridiculous, but at the same time, you know, we or always- Or awesome. Or awesome, yeah. <laughs> we, we always respond pretty much with yes, if. You know, that's pretty much our, our constant answer. You know, custom is very much, we do a lot of custom work. Um, it is very much so in our wheelhouse, we enjoy it. Uh, I always caution people that 
custom is spelled with between one and three dollar signs. You know, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a varying thing in the middle there. But if it's something that it's important and that you want, yeah. every item that we make though is customized for the person that we're working with. Mm -hmm. Sizes, heights, you don't have to get the same height. Everyone doesn't need the same height dining table. Everyone needs different height dining tables. Uh, uh, the, the size of the interior dimension, the number of drawers, the kinds of drawers, the kinds of things that you, you need for your table, all customized, all available in every purchase that you make. But if you say, you know, I like this and I like that, but what I want is, like for example, we, a project where we, they said, I want to store 40,000 miniatures. 40,000 miniatures is a big story yes. project. And, and, and not really, we don't have something off the shelf, so to speak, that does that, though we have nothing off the shelf. Uh, so we designed a built-in cabinet to, to, to uh, index and warehouse 40,000 miniatures. Now those kinds of projects are available all the time. Uh, and people should, you know, if you, if you have like, you know, I don't think that they do this, we do it. We just, we can talk about how, how much it's gonna cost and uh, how long it will take, but we do do it. Now, if, if someone... Uh, oh, wait, one uh, exception. I, we won't do... We don't do anything that's not geeky or innovative, really. Uh, so if you want us to make your bedroom set, it's we're probably not going to do that. Uh, if you tell us why your bedroom set does not fulfill your geek needs, I'm interested. So <laughs> contact me, and uh, I will find out. What about a bed uh, bedroom set that you can rest a portal gun above above it? A now? portal gun? Well, I think that a portal gun doesn't require an entire bedroom set for support. <laughs> nice try, sir. Nice try. But uh, but we can handle the portal gun support all day long. Now, if, if, if someone was uh, wanted to uh, look and order one of these mm -hmm. and, and purchase one of them. What's, what's the uh, ways in which, if they don't attend a con, ways in which they can do so? Well, you can do so on our website, which is geekchichq.com. Chic, of course, is a French borrow word, C-H-I-C. Uh, but uh, what you do is you put a deposit down online. Uh, the deposit is fully refundable. And that's, uh, I've described that as being your quarter on the machine. You know, it's saying, I intend to play this game. And so you can take it back down, but it is putting your, holding your place in line. When you get to the top of that line, we go, you with a bunch of other people this month are going to move into the manufacturing field. At that point, we collect the remainder of the payment that's due on on the uh, the item itself, and we it becomes non-refundable, and we start manufacturing. But if if you go to the website, you can look around and see what see what's there. If you see what you want, and you see like I want one of these things, you put a deposit, and that engages our our uh, valets, who are basically customer service people that, that will start talking to you and helping you navigate the process of buying this furniture. If you don't see what you want, then just email uh, sales at geekchichq.com and they and start the dialogue that way. You can start. You can say, "I think I want this," and they will help you to figure it out that way as well. Uh, what was the strangest request that I got that you got that you were able to fulfill? Uh, it was. I. There are some agreements that we have signed. <laughs> uh -oh. uh, so hold on. Uh, <laughs> so I can talk about. Uh, the uh, a san someone came and said I would like a a 16 by 10 table okay. that can support about uh, eight tons. Uh, wow! But I but and I said and I said uh, it's a sand table, correct? And they said, how do you know it's a sand table? <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, you're talking to me. So you're talking to a geek, and I know what that's for. It's it's, it's for creating old style sand tables and for board gaming in that particular kind of way. And uh, the real the real issue with that was uh, describing. I said, you know, the problem that you have here is is that it's you can't reach the center of the table. Clearly, a 16 by 10, you cannot right. reach the center of the table. And so we uh, we developed a rolling gantry that would go over the entirety of the table, oh, so that you could okay. access the center of the table by climbing a small library ladder, then on the rolling gantry. <laughs> And uh, and that we call that table that is internally called the robber baron, and uh, wow. it is uh, it is a robber baron price. So if uh, something you're interested in, uh, <laughs> we can do it, but it is uh, it is a robber baron price. Wow, incredible! Now one last question: uh, you, you you've also started doing something different at at some of these uh, conventions, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's been a hit. It has been a hit, and yeah. it adds to the um, the culture couture of of the average PAX or, or convention goer. Could you uh, please kindly display your wares? Oh, I you know I have I oh, actually no. they they've stolen. I could I could ask for a mustache. I got a mustache. Somebody. Oh, I actually have. You have, oh, you have mine. It's coming. <laughs> mine is coming. Mine is on its way. I, 
I have not yet started the day. Ah, yes, our uh, <laughs> mustache monocles. They are uh, <clears throat> dignity always at hand if you are wearing your monocle. So, yeah, so we, so we have, uh, if you take a fob, I will put it inside of my shirt button there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I dropped my, oh, how clumsy of me. <laughs> the mustache monocle. <laughs> silly bits that we were doing in the shop and then end up out, out here and of course, you know, anything that we do silly, uh, everyone else thinks, yes, I have to have one of those. So wooden swords and mustache monocles were just boys that are making crazy, silly things in the shop. And sometimes we bring those for sale and, and we created an entire booth this, uh, for this season so that we can, we can sell our mustache monocles. <laughs> They're available online as well oh, in nice. uh, packages of three. All right. Well, thank you so much, Robert. It was I, my pleasure. I, I love, this is one of my favorite booths of the con. Thank you. Some beautiful, beautiful work. Thank you. And uh, wish you continued success, and we look forward to seeing you guys at PAX East. Yes, we'll see you at PAX East. Yes.